Hey everyone, happy Sunday afternoon. It's Chef Maria from Beyond Decadence and I'm in the kitchen today for Sunday Bake Along. I'm going to wait a few minutes to give a people a few minutes to join and then we'll get started. It's Sunday Bake Along time. I'm so excited. I've been waiting for this all day. I give people a few minutes to jump on. Okay, all right, I see we have somebody joining us. I'll wait just a couple minutes. I'm just gonna talk a little bit. I'm not gonna wait too long because I wanna, okay, we've got people joining. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna introduce myself and then we're gonna go through everything step by step. Now, the way I've designed these bake-alongs, most of you know me, but if you don't, let me introduce myself. My name is Pastry Chef Maria Kemp, and I own Beyond Decadence. It's a dessert catering company and pop-up bakery here in Lake Norman, but I also service Charlotte corporate clients as well, and uh, people right here around Lake Norman. And I've been here for almost three years, moved here from Illinois, and I'm a graduate of the French Pastry School in Chicago, dating back to 2007, so it's been a little bit. Um, but anyway, I've had my bakery on pause in terms of baking and delivering things during the pandemic, but I'm getting ready to restart again at the end of the month. So I'll have a menu for Mother's Day and all the exciting spring holidays coming up. So things are going to resume soon because I don't know how long this is going to last and, um, you know, I need to get back to get back to business soon. But I'm really excited. I've been doing these bake-alongs. At first, I started by doing... Um, baking every every night and doing demos for you guys and posting those um, and that was a little much because since we're um you know in the self-isolation mode you know i was self-isolating and so that means i was self-eating all those treats i was making for you on the weeknight so that was a little much so i decided to dial that back and decided i would do the sunday bake alongs and make those free so families can join in and do them with the kids um, i'm going to do everything step by step so you can follow along right with me i'm not going to assume you know anything so if you know a lot about baking hopefully you won't be too bored but if you don't know anything then hopefully the pace will be just right and of course, if you want additional instruction, then I do have paid classes on my website as well. And you can message me and ask me questions, you know, if you have questions on the content. Okay, let's see who we've got joining. Hey, Caroline, you were the uh, one that suggested the quick breads. We've got Shane, we've got Pam. Shane messaged me this afternoon. He's like, I can't find the ingredients. So uh, I'm glad you did that. So that way you and your daughter can bake along. Hey, Pam, I'm going to keep an eye on the messages. I've got my... Dollar Tree reading glasses on. I think these are the Walmart special so I can see the screen. So I'll stop and look. Um, so if you guys have questions, just jump in. I've got this slated for an hour and a half. It, it won't take an hour and a half. Um, it's actually a quick recipe and I'll bake mine and then I'll come back on after it's done and show you what it looked like. So I'm going to throw a lot of information at you, but it's going to help make you more successful baking this and as you bake in the future. Now, as I said, you know, when I posted the recipe, this is not, hey, Michelle, good to see you. Um, this is not my recipe. I went off of the suggestions uh, when I did the poll, or, oh, excuse me, when I said I was going to do the Sunday Bake Along, and somebody suggested, I think it was Caroline, you know, quick breads, muffins, and so I went out and searched and found recipes with the best reviews and using ingredients I have on hand, so I didn't have to go out to the store and buy stuff. So, before we get started, I'm going to break everything down bit by bit. I want you to go ahead, if you haven't already, go ahead and get your sour cream out of the refrigerator. And if you haven't already, get your cream cheese out and your eggs out. And I've got three. One is just to spare in case, you know, I drop it or something crazy happens, but we only need two. And if yours aren't room temperature, if you're just getting them out now for the first time, I'll show you a little trick um, in a minute to warm those up. But we're going to go ahead and set the oven to start with so that can go ahead and start heating up and then I'll go through all the ingredients. So listen to me carefully here. If you're going to be baking this in um, a glass baking dish, you know, a nine by five, you're going to want to set your oven temperature to 325. Glass always bakes 25 degrees lower than non-glass. If you're using non-glass, 
then we're gonna do 350. I actually, these are littler than the nine by five, but my nine by five pan disappeared in my move somehow. Um, and these are a non-stick surface, which is really cool. And they're smaller, but I'm gonna bake it in these. So I'm gonna go for 350. So 350 if you're using non-glass, 325 if you're using glass. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my oven at 350. Okay, so by the time we get ready, or ready for it, it'll be ready. Okay, now also in your baking dish, you want to grease and flour. Now, I'm just gonna use one of these as an example. But it, it, it's a non-stick surface already. But what you would do is you would open up your Crisco. I don't get any kickback from Crisco. Whatever shortening you use. Actually, I have one that's already open. whatever shortening you use, and you would just take it up and open it and smear it. There's a technical word. You would just smear it all inside the pan. So you just smear, 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 smear. Now this is if you're using a glass baking dish, or even if you're using a metal baking dish. These, I don't have to do this because this is a non-stick surface. You can see the shiny coating. But if anything else that you're using, you do need to grease and flour it. So use your shortening. If you don't have shortening because you think it's gross, so you never have it on hand, just use your butter and smear, 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 smear all the inside surfaces. Don't leave anything unsmeared. And then rub it around with your hand. And then you use a little bit of flour. I'm just going to pretend. You lose a little bit of flour and put it in there and shake it around and it's going to stick to all the um stick to all the uh the shortening that's in there okay so that's what grease and flour is okay everybody with me okay caroline's using crisco i got oh wow drisco spray never thought of that good tip okay yeah there are um there are sprays that have um the flour in them I can't remember the brand name, but there is a spray that they've made that, I think, is it called Baker's Joy? But it has the flour right in it. Um, so if you find those, you can use that as well, and that will work just marvelously. There's a new word. Okay, so we've got our oven set on 350 if we're using non-glass, and if we're using glass, we're set on 325, and we've got our pans greased and floured. Now you just need a nine by five baking, a loaf pan, and you only need one of those. Okay, now the next thing we wanna do, and like I said, if you have questions, just jump right in. Next thing we wanna do is double check and make sure we have all of our ingredients because the worst thing that can happen is you get in the middle of a mess of a recipe and then, and then you find out you don't have half of what you need. Hey Sue, thanks for joining us. All right, so the first thing are eggs. So I've got three here because I've got an extra. Now I'm gonna go ahead and talk about this tip now in case you need to do this so you have time while I'm talking. If you just pulled your eggs out of the refrigerator because you didn't see my um, post this morning that said, hey, set your alarm at 12 to pull your um, things out of the refrigerator, no worries, I got you covered. All you do is you take your cold eggs, you put them in a bowl, and then you put warm, now not hot, hey Dana, not hot, don't go super hot because you don't wanna cook them. Just put warm water in them. So I don't wanna turn on the water because I'll probably knock over the phone. And just put, let your eggs sit in the shell in warm water while I keep yapping. And then by that time, five minutes will have gone by and they'll be warmed up enough, okay? So there's your egg tip. So I'll leave those over there right now. So I've got my eggs and I just pulled out a spare just in case. You know why I pulled out that spare? Because <laughs> what happens, what you know, what, what happens is, is you might drop it or maybe you fumble, something happens and then you crack and you waste one of your eggs that's been sitting out at room temperature. Then you're like, well, what do I do now? 
the rest of my eggs are cold. So I pulled out a spare just in case I fumble, so that way I wouldn't have to do the water trick and wait, you know, five or ten minutes. So that's just a little, a little tip for you. All right, then the next thing I want to make sure I have brown sugar. Check. This is light brown sugar. It says light brown sugar, and that's what I always have, so I'm good to go. Then granulated sugar. I've got that down here in my big barrel that holds like 300 pounds, so I'm sure I have enough. And then the next thing is it says liquid state coconut oil, canola, or vegetable oil. Okay, if you have canola oil, um, or excuse me, if you have coconut oil in the vegetable state, let's try that, in the solid state, you can melt it gently in the microwave at like maybe 50%, but just for like five seconds at a time. Your microwave might be more powerful than mine, so I would really go on the side of low, melting it slowly, maybe even like 20%, and so that way you melt it down because we want it in liquid state, but we don't want it to be hot or boiling or bubbling or anything crazy like that. So I've got, what do I have? I've got my canola oil, and it's nice and liquidy, so I'm good. And then the next thing I need, sour cream. I've got my sour cream here, and I have full fat version because that's just better, let's face it. Then I have my vanilla, which I'm always raving about because I love this stuff. And mine is vanilla bean paste, so you see the seeds all in it, and that yummy goodness is going to end up in your banana bread. So it's going to be a thing to marvel. Yeah. And then, let's see, what else do we need? Bananas! When you saw the picture I posted of my Nanas, I said, get your Nanas ready. And usually a cup of bananas is about two bananas, but I went ahead and stuck a third one. Mine were, had a lot of brown spots already on them, but I just put them in the paper bag last night because I wanted to make sure they were a little bit browner. Now, I have some that are in the freezer that are like brown, 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 but they're frozen. And I thought when I thawed them out, they might be too liquidy, so I didn't want to mess with those. And I've got my flour. Oops. And it's ugh, my all-purpose flour. And then I've got my little containers here. I pulled it out just so the counter wouldn't be so messy. And I know which is which. This is baking soda because it's not as clumpy. And this is baking powder. This is much more than I need, but you know, I'm gonna teach you guys how to measure. So that way, if you don't know how to measure correctly, then you're gonna learn that too. And then let's see, what else does it say? A pinch of salt. It says it's optional, so I might actually leave that out. I try not to salt a lot. And then for the cream cheese filling layer, I've got my egg. I know I've got plenty of eggs. I've got my cream cheese. Now my cream cheese is softened because I pulled it out earlier. Actually, it still feels just a little cold, so when we get to that, I'm actually going to throw that in the microwave, so I'll show you that. And let's see, I know I've got sugar, and I know I've got um, all-purpose flour. So we've done, a, we've done our check. In professional baking, what you do when you're assembling all your ingredients is called mise en place. M-I-S-E, new word, E-N, then um, the word place. Yeah, I had to stop and think, which means to set in place, which means you prepare everything before you get started. So if I were doing these in place, this recipe would be done in like five minutes because everything would have been measured ahead of time. So then I would just be going through the steps of making it and that's it. But then you guys don't learn anything that way. So that's why I didn't do it that way. All right. So before I dive into the recipe, any questions? Now I'm going to wait and give you guys a chance to see if you have questions before we start because there's always a delay from when you type it to when I see it. So I'll sing some waiting music and give you a second. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I'm just going to wait just a couple seconds and see if we have any questions. Hopefully everything, everybody has everything that they need. I hope you weren't missing anything big okay i got it all good all right awesome oh oh and hiding over here on the side i almost forgot the most important player of the game in my book is i have my bag with all my different chocolate chips in it because i told you guys earlier i posted i'm going to throw some chocolate chips in it you could throw some nuts in it too if you want um but don't get ahead of me because i'm going to show you a, a, a trick on those all right 
Cool thing about this recipe as we get started is we don't need the mixer yet. Um, you only need the mixer when you get to the cream cheese layer. So that's actually kind of nice because you're not going to dirty up every, every dish in your kitchen. Okay. All right, so let's get started. Okay, first thing, large bowl. So this should be large enough. Yep. Okay, large bowl. And in it goes one egg, your sugars, the coconut oil, sour cream, and vanilla. Okay, so it says egg. I'm just going to go back up here and check one egg. So I'm going to go ahead and crack my one egg. Now, let me give you a little trick too. Since the egg is the first thing in the bowl, I could crack it in there because if bad things happen and I get shell in there or something, it's the first thing in the bowl, so it's easy enough to correct. But get in good habits. So what I'm actually going to do, you know, and also just to make sure you don't get an egg that's funky, because, you know, sometimes you crack them, you know, and they have weird things going on in the inside, and I'll just leave it at that. So I'll just throw it in the sink. Cracked it. He looks good. So I'm going to dump it in. Put that out of the way, and I'm going to wash my hands so I don't get egg all over everything I touch and try not to knock the phone out of the tripod. All right, so the egg is the first thing in. Now, don't get ahead of me because if you've never baked the sure, I, I want to I decipher the, these um, instructions for you. Like the next thing that we're going to put in is the brown sugar. And it says one slash two. Okay, that means a half a cup. So I've got all my measuring cups here. So that means I want to grab this guy. Oh, sorry. Maybe if I hold it the right way, you guys can see it. I know it's going to be backwards. Okay. So this is a half a cup. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right. So a half a cup and brown sugar. Now it says brown sugar packed. So let me scoot my stuff around here a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my spoon because remember I told you last week, I said, please don't do that dip your cup down in it. You, you, I mean, the cup is clean, but still, you'll end up getting up it, getting in much more than you need. So I'm gonna use my spoon, put it in, and give it a little smash. This is called packing. So I'm just putting a little bit in it as a, at a time. Make sure I'm close enough so you guys can see me. Actually, I can consolidate some of my bowls. So I have more room. Okay, I think you're good there. All right, good. All right, so I'm smashing. Yay, thanks Shane. <laughs> and I'm smashing. Don't get impatient and go, oh, that's close enough. That's not full, not even close. Smashing. Now I'm getting closer. Okay, and there we go. Now it's not gonna get much smoother than that, but it's up to the top. Um, you know, in professional baking, everything is done by weight, so we weigh everything in, in gram or kilogram, so um, it does make a difference. This is packed in, and the way you can tell it's packed when I dump it in the bowl is it's going to retain, see it? It retains that shape. So brown sugar in. So what you want to do, brown sugar is in, put the lid on this, get it out of the way. It's easy to see right now, but as you start adding other ingredients to it, it won't get as easy to see and you may think that, you know, oh, I don't have it in and you add it a second time. Not that I've done that before. Okay, anyway, next thing is a, a fourth of a cup of granulated sugar. All right, so I get out my measuring cup, one slash four, that's a fourth of a cup. So my big sugar thing is down here on the floor. It's a big Rubbermaid container. Um, it's a commercial grade one that I had from when I had my, um, my brick and mortar bakery in Illinois. Um, a million years ago. And remember, like I've told you, don't measure over 
I'll just use this. Don't measure over that bowl because this is a big scoop and sometimes it starts getting a little crazy and coming out a little fast. So I'm just actually going to measure over this extra, the bowl that I cracked the eggs in. So if I have any extra, then it's just going to be lost because I'm not going to dump it back in the container because it's got raw eggs on it and that's just kind of nasty. So. And sugar is a little bit different. It's one of those things that you can, you can pour in like that. I mean, spooning it in because of the granules really isn't going to make any difference. So I'm going to pour it a little full. And then over here on the side, I've got a knife. And I'm going to hold it flat. Can you guys see? Oh, yeah, okay, good. On the surface, just to fill it in. It's always a couple holes. Boom. Nice and smooth. In goes the sugar. Oh, my oven is ready. See my oven? That's why I started it early, because it always takes a while to heat up. So I'm double checking each step along the way. I've got my egg, I've got my half a cup of brown sugar, I've got my quarter of a cup of granulated sugar, and then, you notice these are all measuring cups. This is what you use for your dry ingredients. Now I'm doing a liquid, so now it's time to switch to a liquid measuring cup. This is a little baby one that I have, and its maximum is um, a fourth of a cup. It has tablespoon and ounce measurements on it as well. I have bigger ones, but this one will be perfect. So I double check again and it says, okay, my page is reloading. Quarter of a cup of oil. Now my oil is canola oil. And the one thing I like about this little measuring cup is I can actually see the measurement looking down in it, like straight down. So you don't have to do that crazy bending down, you know, at eye level, you know, from the counter, you know, and all of that. My page reloaded, so let me go back up to my, my recipe. This page has a lot of pop-ups on it. There we go. Come on. You can do it. All right. So in goes a quarter of a cup of oil. All right, then the next thing, let's see. Let's jump down and make sure, see what we're supposed to do. All right, so in there we've got our egg, our sugars, our oil, and now the sour cream of vanilla have to go in next. So the sour cream is, let's see, I think it was a half a cup. Come on. Lost it. Oh, a fourth of a cup of sour cream. Okay. All right, so a fourth of a cup of sour cream. And I've got a couple spoons here, so that way I don't stick the um, spoon with the brown sugar, you know, into the sour cream. It says you can use full flat fat or you can use half fat or whatever. Um, this is full fat. And sour cream is one of those things you might say, well, you know, you warmed up the other ingredients. Why aren't you warming up the sour cream? You, you can warm sour cream a little bit. That just seems a little, little, um, it's one of those things you have to be careful warming because if you warm it too much, it will just be a goopy, it will be a horrible mess. Um, and then you won't be able to use it. So I'm just putting it in this cup because even though it's a wet ingredient, I mean, it's, it's liquidy and, you know, not dry for lack of a better word, it still goes in a dry measuring cup. You wouldn't put this in a liquid measuring cup, you know, like this or, you know, even bigger. So what you do, and you saw me do it and it kind of splattered on the counter, but that's okay. It's just give it a little tap on the counter because that will help it settle down because there's inevitably some pockets in there since you're just spooning it in that aren't filled in. So go a little bit more and then I'm going to tap it. Okay, And I'm still going to use my knife and level it off. Move it back and forth a little bit just to fill in what you can. Oops. 
in there. Okay. And then I'm going to switch. I got a little spatula here. Move that out of the way. Rinse my knife off because I didn't want to use that again. Okay, so use a spatula. Get all that in. And this is why I uh, pulled out two fourth of a measuring cups because I know I'm going to need another one. Hey, LaPronda, I know I'm going to need another one soon, and I don't want to deal with that because it's just got stuff all in it. Okay, and then two teaspoons of vanilla. So here is my one. Here's my teaspoon. Teaspoon is abbreviated in recipes sometimes as just a little um, a lowercase t or tsp which is totally different than a tablespoon. A teaspoon is much smaller. This is a tablespoon. See the difference? Huge difference. Okay. So I'm using two teaspoons in my vanilla. And once again, I'm not going to measure over the bowl just in case. I'll use a clean measuring cup sitting here just in case it spills. I can use it for my second tablespoon. And this is like super thick, so it pours. Once it gets going, it pours fast. Okay. Hey, Brandy. All right, so there's teaspoon one, number one in. Give it a little scrape. And now going for teaspoon number two. You have to pour it slow because the, sometimes it like all of a sudden starts pouring really fast and then it comes out in like a big glop and then there's really nothing you can do. Okay. Put that there. Put the cap on this and get it out of the way. That's one of the most important things to do is I'm actually moving things on a certain side so that way I know that I've already used them because as we get going in this like I said you're not going to be able to look down and see what's in there and what's not okay so I think we've got everything in there for the first part let me just double check yep we've got our eggs we've got our sugars we've got our oil we've got our sour cream we've got a vanilla okay so it says whisk combined I have my little baby whisk I'll get this spatula out of the way I mean, if you wanted to use a mixer on this, you could, but there's no point. It's not, it's not hard. It's just one egg in there with those sugars and things, so it's not going to really look too much different even if you used a mixer. You're never going like, to get all that sugar to absorb you know, into the batter. Okay, so boom, it's mixed. You can't see any of the original ingredients. That's, that's my whisk. That's your goal when you whisk, so they're combined. Okay, then let's see, add one cup of flour, your baking powder, soda, salt optional, full with spatula. Okay, so let's break that down. So if you joined me last week, you heard me go on about fluffing your flour, and you probably thought, she's crazy. <laughs> Now, if you look at any of the, the sites like King Arthur recipes, they make flour and all sorts of amazing baking products. They talk about it as well. So I've got my one cup, and I know it's one cup because it says one cup right there. Okay. And then I've got my fork over here, and I'm going to fluff the flour. <laughs> You're probably like, what? You're fluffing it just to kind of keep it from being clumpy and lumpy. Um, it doesn't say that you need to sift this, so I'm not going to. This is actually a really quick recipe. So I've just given it a little fluff just to break it up. And then I'm going to spoon it into the cup. And 
And this is, again, you don't want to take the cup and dig down into there because you will pack a lot more flour in that you think. And that's why people either love baking or they hate it because it's a science and it's all about a balance of ingredients. So if you have too much flour because you've dug your cup down in there to fill it up, it can throw it off and your recipe could be too heavy because it's got too much flour in it and it's not in proper proportion with the other ingredients. So you spoon it in, you overflow it, I give it just a little tap just to settle it a little bit, and then I'm gonna get a clean knife, because the other one I just rinsed and I don't want any residue in my flour thingy. I just give it a little, just to smooth it out, because there's some lumps and bumps, and then I'm gonna hold it up so you guys can see it, and then I just run the knife across it you can hold it that way and go across, or you can hold it flat. It really doesn't matter. Just as long as the blade is, is something is flat going across the surface. And that's how you correctly measure flour. And then in goes the flour. Turn it down. And then baking powder, baking soda, salt if you're using it. Oh, I did it again. Good grief. The bananas were supposed to go in first. Ah, shoot. Well, I'm just going to give this a light stir. Maybe you're reading the directions and you got the order right. I hate when that screen jumps. I'm sorry. I'm just going to give this a light stir. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the bananas. Okay, so if you're reading the recipe on the screen, you probably got the order right. If you were following me, just go ahead and give that a light stir. I know, I, I missed the bananas. And then I'll go ahead and do the bananas. Use my tomato masher and just mash them. already got my flour in I'm gonna go ahead and put in the um, the baking soda and the baking baking powder so it's just a half a teaspoon of each because once the bananas are in then we're almost done so this is my baking soda so I'm just using my half a teaspoon oops got a little hole in it Okay, and I've got that nice and smoothed out. And since I've already got my flour in, I'm gonna just sprinkle it over top. And then this is my baking powder. And I've got my half a teaspoon, and I'm gonna sprinkle that over top. And I'm gonna leave out the salt. You can put in the salt if you want. And I'm just going to go ahead and give that a little stir. I'm just going to stir it lightly. Okay. And I think we'll be okay. All right. So if you were reading the recipe, you probably caught it before I did. 
but my screen kept jumping and I missed it. So that looks like that should be about a cup, but we'll find out real quick. So let me just double check. One cup of bananas, yes. Mash it a little bit more. The ones on the bottom weren't mashed enough. Okay. And I'm just going to spoon it into my measuring cup. We'll see how close these two large bananas were. I put three in the bag just in case. It looks like this is going to be very, very close where it's not, where it's just enough. Yep. That that's plenty. Okay. Actually, you shake it a little bit, it settles so it's enough. Okay, and I use my little spatula. Get the bowl out of the way with all the banana goop. Ugh, junk's everywhere. And then I'm just gonna give it a light stir with my whisk. And if you chose to put in the, the um, the um, pinch of salt, then your salt is in. I'm gonna leave the salt out. And there it is. Now what you could do, if you wanna use the chocolate chips, if I wouldn't have gotten the order, um, the order uh, wrong, then I could have showed you the way I really wanted to. But to keep your um, chocolate chips from sinking or whatever chips that you use from sinking to the bottom of the banana bread, you give them a light toss in flour. So let's break this down for a second. If I would have put the bananas in first, mix those in, then the flour would have been on top last, if that makes sense. So then I could have just put the, the chocolate chips right on top of the flour. But since I put them in at the wrong point, I'm gonna just toss them in a little bit of flour and show you how to get around that. Okay. So this original recipe didn't have the chocolate chips in them, but I think chocolate chips and banana bread is great, so why not? So I'm just going to use this bowl here. And now you don't want to put in a lot of flour, so I'm just going to put in just like a tablespoon of flour. Not a lot, because I mean they don't have to be like, you know, swimming in flour. And I've got all sorts of chocolate chips. I've got dark chocolate chips, I've got peanut butter. I've got semi-sweet, I've got milk chocolate. I think I'll use a little bit of semi-sweet. And it just depends on how many, how chocolatey you like it. So you don't want to put in an excessive amount because, you know, then it will be more chocolate chips than, um, than banana bread. And actually minis would be really wonderful in here if you had mini chocolate chips. So I've got a half a cup. And I'm just going to give them a light stir, a light toss. Actually, I think I want a little bit more than that. So I'm going to go for a cup of chips. As they fly all over the counter. Okay. And then I'm just giving them a light toss. So that way they're coated. And I'm just gonna pick them up and dump them in. I wanna add as little of that extra flour as possible. What's on the chocolate chips is fine, but I don't necessarily want the whole tablespoon in my batter. Now you might not wanna add chocolate chips to yours. You might say, okay, this has cream cheese layer, so that's rich enough for me. And that's fine. Actually, the fork will work better. Okay. It's 
going to be a really rich bread. Okay, that's tedious. I'm like getting tired of doing that. Okay, just leave the rest of these for something else later. Okay. So next what we're going to do is make the cream cheese layer. Actually, I'll cheat and I'll put them through a little sifter to get rid of all that extra that I don't want in there. Okay, that's much better. All right, now we're back to square one. All right, so I'll give those just a light stir. Stir it up. Okay, now we're ready to move on to the cream cheese layer. So the cream cheese still layer, here's where we're gonna use our other egg that's been sitting out at room temperature. And this is where we can use the mixer. The mixer will make this a little bit quicker. So I'm still gonna crack the egg in my extra bowl. After I rinse out all the extra sugar that was in there. Just to make sure it looks good before I put it in my bowl. Yep, and it does. Good. That's always nice when that happens. So in goes the egg. Wash my hands. Get that raw egg off of there. All right, then we've got the four ounces of cream cheese, a fourth of a cup of granulated sugar, and then three tablespoons of um, flour. So we've got a fourth a cup of sugar. a cup of sugar and see how this cream cheese is doing. Now I used a little bit of this before for another recipe so I know I've got about five ounces left. So I'm going to shave off just a little bit. Now you can tell whether it's soft enough or not. Like when I push my finger down there, that's, that's actually pretty soft. It's a little bit better than I thought. Now I'm just looking at the lines on the side, or if I don't want to mess with that, actually what's quicker is I could just put it on a scale and weigh it. But let me see about these lines, if I can get the lines. The number of ounces. Okay, and I'm just using the lines on the side because those lines on the side of the cream cheese are one ounce increments. So I could pull out my scale if I wanted to, but I can see I'm between the lines, so I have four ounces. So I put in the cream cheese, and there's my ounce that I didn't need. It would be tempting just to throw that in and say, oh, well, it's close enough, but it can throw it off, so we don't want to do that. And then the last thing that goes in are three tablespoons of flour. Get my flour. I use my knife 
And I'm just gonna do this over, over the sink this time. Okay, and there's one. How are you guys doing? Are you baking along or are you just watching? Let me know which one you're doing. Here's the second one. Boom. And here's the third. Okay. Top back on it. Okay. And I pulled out my electric mixer this time. Just a little one. Just to whip this up quickly and easily. just a little bit more and then it's ready. The cream cheese did break down nicely. I might have even gone just to put it in the microwave just for a couple seconds. But that's it. That's how easy the cream cheese filling is. Okay, we've got a couple people baking along. Okay. All right. Awesome. Throw those over there. Get those out of the way. The mixer out of the way. Okay. Now remember, our oven is ready because we turned that on at the very beginning. Um, let's see. We greased and floured our pan. Like that. So now we are ready to start putting it in the pan to bake it. Any questions before we start putting it in the pan? Nothing? Okay. All right, well, if you guys have questions, jump in. All right, so I think we got everything, all right. And your pans are going to look a little bit different than mine, and that's okay, because I showed you at the beginning, I have these non-stick pans um, that you actually bake right in. They're paper, but they're non-stick, and so they're a little bit smaller than the 9x5 baking pan that you guys are probably using. Oh, I've got that banana and stuff like all over my hands. In one second, there we go. It's like everything I touch has bananas on it. How do we guesstimate two thirds? Usually there's eight cups of batter. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna show you. got a bowl because when I was reading through the recipe it is kind of that really is kind of like a uh, tricky and it's measured on the side so I'm gonna dump this batter into here and see how many cups usually it's about eight cups for a nine by five pan but let's see eight sounds like a lot but I was reading another baking chart and that's what it suggested where 
the amount of batter you have for um, a nine by five pan. But let's see where we come out. This looks like this is probably about four cups of batter. Yeah, it's right about, I'm gonna show you, this is actually kind of a neat way to do it. There's a line for two way down there, and I had to move some of the batter out of the way, but you can see where it comes to in the bowl. Here's six up here, and two is down here. So it's almost in between. So I'm gonna say this is about four cups of batter. So two thirds of four cups. Oh, my math is not working. I think it'd probably be about a cup, cup and a, cup and a quarter. Can't think right now. No, this is definitely, it might actually cause it to rise up a little bit more, but that's, I don't think that cream cheese is going to cause it to go up. Eight cups would be like up to here. So I think you've got about four cups of batter in here. So for two thirds of four cups, I'm trying to do the math real quick and my brain's just not working right now. Um, if you start with um, probably like a cup, I would say like a cup, maybe a cup and a half. Just fill up your pan about halfway, and then we're gonna put the batter on top of it. So I'm gonna use these little pans, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Mine are going to probably take a little bit less, but let me do this first one to start with. Then I can give you a better idea. Yours are going to be much deeper than mine because these definitely are not the same um, depth as a 9 by 5 Thank you for doing the math. I couldn't, my brain just could not calculate it that quick. I apologize. Okay. And then I'm actually going to use a scooper. And I've got my spoon here. spread it all the way out across the surface of the batter. You don't just want it down the middle. So that's why I started a little conservative at first. 
and this scooper that I have is just one that I use for um, for batter for a lot of things. It's a number 20 scoop. Now the filling's a little bit heavy, so I can tell it's sinking down a little bit into the batter. Make sure you guys. Oh. I'll hold these up and show them to you here in just a second. Just trying to even it out. See which one looks like it needs a little bit more. I used a three tablespoon um, scoop. It's the same one that I use for um, for a lot of things, and so it's a number twenty, and it holds three tablespoons. So I use that and drop the batter, and then I'm just going to try and smooth it out a little bit more. It's kind of heavy and hard to smooth because as soon as you put it in there, I can tell it you know it starts to sink a little bit too. How did you guys do getting yours smoothed out? This spatula, this offset spatula does help a lot. Makes it a little bit easier to move it around. Boy, this takes like the longest of the whole recipe is trying to move this stuff around to make sure I've covered as much as possible. Okay. All right. Yeah, it is a little. It was a little tricky to smooth, but the offset spatula did spatula <laughs> did help a lot. All right, and then I'm just gonna put the rest of my batter in. And I, this is a cup that I'm using, and I'm actually going to go about half, half full, only because I don't have a lot of batter left, and I want to make sure I have enough to cover all three.
Now another thing that you can do, like when you run into that issue with the, the two thirds, because that was an excellent question, and the reading I was doing in advance was saying that nine by five pans usually hold about eight cups of batter, but when I measured this, I saw this was closer to four, is you can always weigh things to begin with. Like I could have weighed that bowl while it was still empty, so that way once I weighed it after the um, batter was in there, then I would know how much was batter, and then it's just easy math, you know, to do the dividing. I'm just looking at the comments. Yeah. Yeah, in all the pictures that I looked at, um, you know, on this recipe, is the bottom layer is definitely thicker, and the cream cheese layer, you know, the layer on top of the cream cheese, you know, is a little bit thinner. It still covered it up, but I'll show you as soon as I get the rest of this on here. Yeah, it definitely is thinner on the top. I totally agree with that. But I don't think I would have gone any lighter on the bottom layer because it wouldn't like hardly be anything in there. Okay, I'm almost at the end. All right, I've got it in here and I'll show you. Now I can see one is a little bit fuller than the other. Yeah, this one's definitely a little bit fuller than this one or this one. So I think if I were to make this again, I would definitely, since especially since I was dealing with smaller pans, but even still, I think I would, um, I would weigh it I would weigh the batter so that way I know exactly how much batter I have and then I can evenly distribute it amongst the pans with precision. So here's what mine look like. Let's see. And I'm going to go in and stick them in the oven and I'll keep track of how long they bake for in these little pans and then after they're ready. I'll pull them out and I'll do another short video to show you guys how mine came out and I'd love to see how yours come out too and then we'll see what we learn together. Thank you guys so much for joining me in the kitchen. I hope you had fun. I did too. At least I started with the empty dishwasher so now I can just throw everything in the, uh, the dishwasher, all the dirty dishes, but as soon as they're done I'll come back. Before you sign off, um, make sure as you're baking these the suggested bake time, let me look real quick, is you have to be careful to go by when you think it's done and your um, toothpick is probably going to hit the cream cheese. So make sure you're you know, getting part of the bread layer in there when you're testing it with your toothpick because that cream cheese layer, you know, it's going to be a little gooey. It's not going to set, you know, firm, firm. Uh, so just don't get tricked. So do it by the test and not by the time. Um, the suggested bake time on this, I'm looking for it real quick before we go is 48 to 50 minutes um, or until the top is domed and golden and the center is almost set. But like I said, you have a few moist crumbs but no batter and make sure you're not just hitting the cream cheese layer. 
Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you had fun. I did too. And I'll see you back in a little bit as soon as mine are done. Mine aren't going to bake as long because they're in smaller pans. So I probably will be able to post before, before you do. Um, yeah, just let it cool in the pan about 15 minutes before you um, turn it out onto a wire rack. Just make sure it's all the way done and all the way set before you try and take it out of that pan or um, bad things will happen. All right, look at the notes in, on the uh, end of the recipe on the baking and stuff like that, and I'll see you back here in a little bit. Thank you guys for joining me. You're welcome. I hope you had fun this Sunday afternoon.